All right, now we'll move to the sensation portion of our neurological exam. And uh, in this part of the exam, we're going to be testing a few different modalities. We're going to pay closest attention to light touch, uh, where the light touch pathways go up through the dorsal columns, and then pain, uh, where the pain would go through the spinal thalamic tract. With light touch, I think it's sufficient just to use a nice light brushing with your fingertip over the key points uh, represented uh, in the dermatomal map of your handout. The, uh, the dermatomes that we'll go over are primarily those of the upper and lower extremities. So we'll start, and what I'll simply ask you to do is tell me if the sensation feels the same to you or it feel, if it feels different on one side or the other. Okay. So I'll start with the C4 dermatome, which is towards the top of the shoulder at the AC joint, and just with a light brush. Feels the same? Same or different, about the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's C4. We'll move down to C5 now, and C5 will be over the lateral elbow. So we'll again do a light brush. Same? Same, okay. What I'll have you do is just relax your hands open like this, and we'll move down to C6, which is over the thumb. C7, middle finger, mm -hmm. C8, little finger, same, and T1 over the medial aspect of the elbow, same. Okay, as a frame of reference, we tell folks to remember their six shooter, so they can remember the thumb is C6, and then if you've noticed, everything would be symmetric around the thumb. C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. You're just kind of working your way around. Okay? In the trunk, the classic landmarks are T4 for the nipple line, T10 for the umbilicus, and then everything is kind of broken down into equal bands around those landmarks. Down in the lower extremities, we have the L2 dermatome, which will be right over the center of the anterior aspect of the thigh. Again, a nice light, I'm going to scoot your pant leg up here okay. and touch. Nice light stroke on each side. Same. Okay. L3 will be over the medial aspect of the knee. Same. Down to L4 over the medial malleolus by the ankle. Same. L5 over the dorsal aspect of the foot, kind of at the base of the toes. Same. And then S1 will be over the lateral aspect of the heel. Same. Okay. For the uh, pain portion of the examination, we'll look at these same dermatomes. We suggest that you use either a safety pin. In this case, we're going to use a little cotton swab. Or you can use a tongue blade. For these, we're just going to kind of crack it so we can see something that looks relatively sharp. And what we'll do is we'll poke over each of those uh, key points in the dermatomes and ask if the sharp sensation feels about the same on one side as it does on the other. Okay. So again, maybe just one or two pokes in each key spot on one side and then on the other side. So starting at C4 again. Mm -hmm. Same. About the same on mm -hmm. both sides. Okay. And then we'll move down to C5 over the lateral aspect of the elbow. Same. C6 again is down in the thumbs. Yep, same. C7 middle finger. Same. C8 little finger. Same. And T1 will be over the medial aspect of the elbow. Same. Okay, good. And then we'll move down into the lower extremities again. Starting with L2, anterior thigh. Same. L3, medial knee. Same. L4, over the medial malleolus of the ankle. Same. L5, dorsal foot. Same. And then S1 over the lateral aspect of the heel. 
over the lateral aspect of the heel. Same. Okay, good. Um, if you have some concerns or there's maybe some subtle discrepancies in terms of when you're doing your sharp examination where you're just comparing from side to side, you can also ask the subject to close his eyes and then in an individual spot, you can have him compare the sharp versus the dull and ask him to tell you which feels sharp and which feels dull. Now when you're doing this, it's important to do a poke with each one. So a poke for the sharp side and a poke for the dull side as opposed to a swipe with the dull side and then a poke with the sharp side because that's easy to distinguish for a lot of other reasons. Uh, the pain and temperature again travel through the same uh, spinal thalamic tract. So really if the pain sensation is at all altered or if you have some specific concerns about temperature sensation, that would be the reason to do this aspect of the examination. And what we'll do is we'll concentrate the examination, either working distally to proximally or if there are specific dermatomes um, that you're concerned about. In this case, we'll pick a tuning fork, handy, readily available, usually feeling somewhat cool relative to the rest of the environment, and we'll just put it in the dermatomes uh, that we're interested in assessing. So I'll set this on there, and I'll ask you to tell me if it feels about as cool on one side as it does on the other okay. side. Yes, it does. Yep, that's the same. 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 Whoop. There same. We go. Yep. Both cold. Same. All right, and again, we've just worked our way through C4 through uh, T1 dermatomes. And we could do the same thing down in the lower extremity if we'd like. Next, we're going to move to the vibration testing portion of the examination. For the vibration sense, what we do is we pick out the distal joints in the hands or the feet and try to get a sense for whether or not they can feel the vibration. So in this case, we'll start with the hand. And what I'll have you do is close your eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll start my tuning fork, and then I'll put it over a DIP joint. So I'll find his finger, find the DIP joint, put the tuning fork on, and ask him if he can sense a vibration. Yes. Now, if he can't sense the vibration there, what we will typically do is move proximally on joints farther and farther up his arm until we can get a sense as to whether or not he can feel and at what point he can feel. Okay, then we'll move down to the lower extremities and test the same thing. Again, we'll look first at distal joints in the toe. Yes. See if you can feel that. And if not, again, we'll move proximally farther up on joints in the lower extremity. Uh, next, we'll move to the position sense portion of the examination. And in this case, again, what we'll do is we'll be testing at distal joints in the hands and feet to get a sense for if they're normal. And if not, we'll be moving higher up through successive joints in the upper or lower extremity. For this portion of the exam, again, we'll have the patient close his eyes. And when we grab our finger to test, what we want to make sure to do is grab on the sides of the fingers so we don't give any inadvertent clues uh, that might come through pressure over the bottom or the top where the finger pads are particularly sensitive as opposed to on the outside. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have the finger in a nice neutral position and we're going to wiggle the joint either up or down and ask the patient to tell us whether or not he feels his position is now up or down. So starting in a neutral position and we'll ask him now. Up. And then again. Down. Return it to neutral and then move to another. Down. Okay. All right. Next, we'll assess the Romberg test. For the Romberg test, we want our patient to be standing. We'll ask him to bring his feet close together and next to each other, if possible. And then what we'll do is ask him to close his eyes while we're ready on the ready to catch him if he loses his balance. And what we'll do is we'll watch for a good 10 seconds or so, noting slight swaying, which is normal. But if he loses his balance, that would be considered an abnormal Romberg test. All right, you can open your eyes and relax.